Yes guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to talk to you about the five common problems that you will come across with your Focus ST. So first up on the list is the cracked liner. Uh, I've put this first because it is the most talked about thing that you will hear about with the STs. Uh, it's the first thing people ask you, have you got block mod, blah, blah, blah. So when you have a cracked liner, uh, the car is going to overheat because obviously it's letting um, water into the cylinder. So you're not going to have the coolant going around the system to cool it down. Um, the cylinder is very likely to misfire. Uh, because it will um, knock the spark out uh, and this will cause the, uh, the cylinder to, to go down so you'll be uh, running lumpy and you'll most likely hear it as well um, another problem will be the coolant will be mixing with the oil so you have coolant in your oil because it'll be going down past the uh, uh, cylinder liners and the walls and that and it will be uh, mixing and congealing in your sump a lot of people say you don't need it. I think it's it's worth it. Peace of mind, if nothing else. It can go once the block mod has been installed, but it is a lot less likely and a lot less common. This is quite a expensive, in my opinion, thing to have done. Uh, it's roughly around eight hundred pound, uh, depending on what company you go with and where where you have it done. Uh, the shims themselves aren't actually that expensive. They're only small and uh, I think you can pick them up for about 15, 20 quid. But with everything that's got to come off, it's just not worth doing it yourself unless you're very capable. Um, but the average Joe like myself, I wouldn't attempt it. Um, so that's number one. Number two being the oil diaphragm. Uh, I haven't actually experienced this myself, but I know a lot of people that have. Um, and when the diaphragm goes, when you turn the car on, you'll get a loud high-pitched whine. Um, and you'll know it's the oil diaphragm because if you open the oil cap in the engine bay, the noise will stop. Um, so if you ever get a high-pitched whine coming from there, open the oil cap and uh, you'll know then if it's the oil diaphragm or not. Uh, this can be uh, changed quite easily, well cheaply should I say, not easily, um, it's just a little piece about 2 inch by 2 inch, something like that, uh, it's just a little rubber seal that sits inside the oil filter housing itself, and like I said that can be replaced quite cheaply, uh, but most people just upgrade to the um, metal Volvo unit. Uh, it's supposed to be an upgraded unit lock, so I've not done it myself, so I've not been through the experience of it, but that's number two. Next up, we have the boost solenoid, and I have had a problem with mine. It was um, a problem early on, which thankfully I was identified quite quickly, so I was able to change it. Now, when this uh, is playing up, the boost will fluctuate on the gauge and the car won't be running right, it won't be boosting right, should I say. When mine went, it wouldn't go past a quarter of the way on the boost gauge, um, no matter what I tried to do or, or how, <laughs> how hard I tried to push the car, it just wouldn't go above a quarter. Um, it's supposed to go from the zero up to three quarters and then settle about halfway. Well, like I say, mine wasn't even going past a quarter, so that's um, it's a good indication that your boost solenoid is on the way out. They're pretty easy to replace. Um, I found it okay. The hardest thing really is getting the uh, vac lines off. Um, and if you do try to do it yourself, remember which way around the vac lines go. Um, if anybody needs a diagram or help with that, just let me know in the comments and I'll uh, I'll tell you which ones go where. I haven't got the diagram to hand, but I have got one. Um, so uh, it'd be easy enough for me to show you. And these can be replaced for around 50 quid. Uh, you can pick them up from reputable places like Wayside Performance, uh, Matt Lewis Motorsport, all those sorts of places uh, quite easily. 
don't go for a second hand unit and don't go for a cheaper unit it's just not worth the hassle because if it doesn't it doesn't work well you still get the same issues you're not going to know if it's the blue solenoid or not so buy genuine and uh, follow the rule of buy cheap buy twice next on the list is the bonnet lock now this happened to me uh when i first got the car well it was one of the the issues that the car had um so straight away i bought a bonnet lock off ebay i think it was about 15 quid um and that lasted for six months something like that uh so i bought another one thinking maybe i had a bad one and it happened again after probably two months um so that was about 30 or 40 quid i'd laid out and hadn't even got a year out of both um so basically when i'd done some research everyone was saying mark four bonnet lock conversion so that's what i did to mine there's uh videos on my youtube channel um of how i did it where i put the uh the lock and everything else so definitely worth doing it's frustrating as hell when it happens um because you've got to try and get into your bonnet i had to rip the top grill out um pull it all out the back rip it all out from uh, where it is and use a long screwdriver to uh, turn the lock to allow myself to open the bonnet it's not fun and for a while i did just carry around a large screwdriver in my uh, in my car and then every time i wanted to get in i would use the screwdriver to open the lock but you know it's not very secure it means anyone can really get into your car so uh it's not worth the um the aggro with that these uh conversions i think it comes to around 50 quid in total for the parts last but not least is the dash cluster now this happened to me and it is annoying as anything it's so frustrating you'd be driving down the road five minutes later 20 minutes later 45 minutes later the car would cut out well no it wouldn't cut out sorry it would um you wouldn't be able to accelerate at all or if you could it would be very very minimal a uh, car wouldn't go above like 2000 revs or something like that and you'd have to pull over turn the car off sometimes it would turn back on and everything would be okay sometimes it wouldn't sometimes the car wouldn't start at all you know first thing um and it would come up on the dash reduced acceleration and power steering assist fault um and i'm there thinking oh god you know this is this is horrendous what is this and it is just the the dash itself everything that the car does communicates pretty much through the dash um so when it, it can't read something it shuts everything off so that you know nothing can can be damaged um and basically all it is the solder on the back of the dash um on the like you know the, the motherboard on the back of the dash all the i think there's a couple of solders that burn out so instead of having like a solid connection there's a bit of a gap and that causes it to uh, not be able to talk to one thing or another so it just shuts off um a lot of people say smacking the top of the dash will help and i actually did that at one point because i was just so frustrated with the car and it, it worked fine for a while but um it is an easy fix you get your get your dash out uh send it off to a guy called aaron beatwell who works for um custo mod and uh he's around 60 quid something like that but touch wood since then haven't had a problem with it and um i was very skeptical at first so you know you're thinking well the dash can do all that it can it really can um so yeah that was my number five now i did consider putting the drive shafts in as a problem but i don't see that as a problem uh, that could go wrong through no fault of your own they go through harsh acceleration all the time you know i've had my car for two years at this point and i've not had to replace it once neither of them again touch wood i haven't had to uh, but that's just down to the way i drive i don't you know thrash the pants off it everywhere i go um especially from uh, low down in the rev range 
So I was going to put that in, but I'm not going to because for me that's down to uh, the driver and how you drive. So that's my top five. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit the subscribe button if this is the sort of thing or some of the other videos are helpful and this is the sort of thing you're into. And I'll catch you in the next one.